Hi, my name is Olivia. Grab yourself something to drink. This is pumpkin Earl Grey tea by David's Tea. I will link it down below if you're curious. Let's talk working with spirits of the dead, cemetery etiquette, offerings, etc. And also note that I will be using the terms graveyard and cemetery interchangeably, but if you're curious, graveyards are connected to churches, whereas cemeteries are not. Okay, so first off, why even work with spirits of the dead? There's actually a lot of reasons why I personally think that working with spirits of the dead comes in handy and also just knowing the spirits around you. The first reason is it gives you a sense of community within the spiritual realm. Remember, these spirits are people who lived in your area and likely died in that area as well. They're your locals, just not physically anymore. Visiting cemeteries also gives you a really good understanding of your area's history. Think of it as getting to know your community, but the communities that came before you. It's a bit of a history lesson as well, but a little more interactive and fun. So you get to find different graves of the different people who came before you. If you dig in the research way, not physically, then you'll find a lot about this person. You can use findagrave.com, which I'm pretty sure if you look up this specific grave, then you can see a photo of it, or if there's not already a photo, then you can add a photo of it. And sometimes there's gonna be logs of that person's life and you can kind of do a little more research on who they were and where they came from. All of a sudden you start to see all these different little connections and if you're interested you can play a little bit of a game of connect the dots and start connecting all of these different people to different stories to other people to even places that maybe still run like businesses that still run in your town like i said findagrave.com or the book of seances are really good starters for this kind of practice these spirits are local they have the knowledge and how to of your area of your community as compared to other spirits or even deities who seem a little more distant personally with the spirit the dead once established a relationship can have huge impacts on your manifestations on your rituals having a better overview and understanding when it comes to divination especially about topics that are more close to home and more local for example if you've ever seen the show parks and recreation the main character leslie is working for her government and for a really long time in the series she's constantly fighting to get this like really ugly eyesore of a pit of a hole in her community to be filled in and used for something that betters her community, like a park. Often she'll be going to people who are city council that are right in the city, the people that are right there, as opposed to if she were to write a letter or email somebody from like the House of Representatives of all of the United States. Because most likely the House of Representatives aren't really going to care if there's a pit in some random little town compared to all these other projects and all these other things that they're going to be working on or handling. Leslie and the city council of Pawnee, which is her town, those are the people who are going to be directly affected by this pit in her town. And once it's filled in and created something beautiful with it, they're also going to be reaping the benefits of that directly. So think of it that way, that your local spirits are like Leslie and the city council compared to other spirits who are further away or just don't have a connection to your local area, like the House of Representatives or like the president. Further, those locals are gonna have way better of an understanding of how to tackle this situation, how to problem solve, because they know all the ins and outs, they know all the details. So working with spirits of the dead especially when it comes to something that is a more local issue, they are going to have way more of a punch. The spirits of the dead are not the only spirits you will encounter or that are residing within cemeteries or graveyards. And the first one is the spirit of the cemetery itself. This is more of an energy and it's an accumulation of an energy. It's like a genus loci because this is the spirit of the place that has been built upon, meaning that it's the entity that was created as the cemetery was built. Most of the time this isn't really an active entity, more of something that people would categorize as like the vibe or the energy of a place. The second spirits that you'll most likely come into contact with are the guardians of the graveyard or the guardians of the cemetery. These are not people who have passed away. Now these spirits are active and most of the time will be very suspicious of you, especially being that they know that you're a practitioner. Practitioners have an energy. They have the energy coming off of them. Spirits know when you're a practitioner. They are usually the ones that will greet you right at the gate, or if you ever feel like somebody's watching you through the gate, it's most of the time the guardians. They are there to protect the spirits, often 
the spirits within the cemetery and sometimes, depending on the cemetery, protect everything outside from the spirits within that cemetery. Greeting them directly and giving them offerings right at the cemetery gates is usually advised. Finally, we get to the spirits of the dead. Some spirits leave, especially when there's nobody left to visit them. So often very old cemeteries, especially ones that are not fenced in, usually seem quiet and abandoned, even by the spirits. However, often if there's a cemetery gated by an iron fence, there's a folklore believing that the iron itself keeps the spirits in and within the perimeters of that cemetery so they wouldn't be able to leave. And lastly, did I say lastly already? Whatever. Lastly, we have the nature spirits. Of course, the trees, the flora and the fauna, all of those would be considered the nature spirits that are within the cemetery. And especially the plants that grow within the perimeters of a graveyard, especially if it has a fence, often you will find that that particular plant, despite the fact if you worked with the herb or not otherwise, has a special kind of essence to it just because it's so connected directly to the spirits of the dead. Let's talk about how to build a relationship with the spirits. First off, visit them. Visit the local spirits. Bring a friend if you want. Each cemetery is going to feel different, so just understand that. Some cemeteries are really going to like visitors and be really curious and want to know what you're doing here, and others are going to be standoffish, and some you just know that you probably shouldn't enter. Some might be welcoming, but not really into helping you with any of your magical workings. However, others might not be welcoming, but will definitely pack a punch. These relationships and these interactions are going to vary so much just depending on the people who are buried there and what kind of cemetery it is. Because the spirits are people. Remember that. Treat them as such. If you come across a cemetery that doesn't like visitors or does not want to be involved within your magical practice, so even if you like to visit them and chat with them and they don't, but they don't really want to work with you on spells or manifestations, just respect that. Once you find a cemetery that you really like and that you feel kind of drawn to or that you feel kind of comfortable in, visit and visit often. Depending on how far your cemetery is, visit as often as you can. Maybe this is on the way to work or university to home and you can pass through it every single day and just say hi. Or maybe it's out of the way, but you can at least visit on weekends or after work once a week. Maybe it's really out of the way and once a month seems more feasible. Just try to make it more of common occurrence so that the spirits become a lot more comfortable with your presence. Next is offerings. Don't overthink this. People always overthink the offerings. This can literally just be a couple coins at the very front of the cemetery gates. This can be a flower or even small fruits that you grow in your gardens. This can be some tea that you brew and pour out as an offering or even just walking around the cemetery and picking up trash, cleaning off some of the headstones and just doing a little bit of aesthetic care for them. If you're familiar and comfortable with energy work, you can also do a small meditation and offer some of your own energy. However, I would advise against this unless this is something that you're super comfortable with and you're really good with grounding, warding, and knowing your energetic boundaries. Offerings will differ depending on if you're working with a spirit directly. Most of the time, if you're just entering and you're just hanging out, then offerings are usually set right at the front or at the gates. But if you're working with specific spirits of the dead, so a specific headstone or a specific person, then those offerings might differ. So that person might be really accustomed to cigars or cigarettes compared to others might just want glasses of water or a small votive candle. But do be sure to check all of the regulations and all the rules of specific cemeteries and graveyards because each one is different and you, you wanna respect the space as well. Every single person that's buried there is somebody else's loved one. So you wanna make sure that you're respecting both the cemetery itself, the spirits of the people who have passed, and also the living who are coming to visit them. My next one is bring divination. So often, remember, these are spirits of people. And so far I have found that the spirits love to chat. It's not even like anything super deep for the most part, at least for me. Often when I bring my friends and I bring my divination, my friend and I were chatting and we were kind of like talking about some drama stuff that we had heard about. And we were like, oh, you know what? This is probably kind of, kind of disrespectful to be talking about this in a cemetery. And we pulled some cards and it said T, community like talk basically and it was like no I, I need the I need the tea like continue to speak which I thought was hilarious they just wanted to hear us chat they wanted to be with involved in the conversation sometimes if you're talking to them about a specific situation 
even if you're not really asking for advice, a lot of the time they like to give unsolicited advice. So like I said, they're just people, so treat them as such. The more you go, the more you'll probably find that certain ways of divination or maybe certain decks are more likely to give you more direct answers. For me, it's usually my magpie oracle or I have a very specific oracle deck that is dedicated to just any time I visit a cemetery. And the spirits tend to seem to really gravitate and really like this deck. Do not ask for anything immediately. In fact, don't really expect anything in the beginning. If you pick a cemetery where the spirits are pretty shy, they're probably not really going to be comfortable talking to you immediately. Or if you pick a cemetery that's very upfront and aggressive, they're also probably not going to want to just have you be asking for favors. So this goes back onto visit often and try to make it a routine, right? And then, and you know everybody in your neighborhood, you know everybody on the block, but then all of a sudden this new person starts walking their dog through your neighborhood, or maybe they take a jog or something. And you know that they come at least once a week Maybe it's like every Wednesday or something. And you start seeing them really often. So them hanging out in the park that you frequent and they say, oh, hey, how's it going? You're probably more likely to start a conversation with them being that you've seen them more and more often compared to if you've never seen this person in your life and they're like, hey, how's it going? By the way, can I have a dollar? You'd be like, no. But if you've seen them often and they start chatting with you, you start to see that you have something in common or maybe they're just really interesting. I don't know, they're just a nice person. Then after maybe a month or two or even longer, depending on you personally, they might be like, can I borrow like a dollar, five dollars? You'd probably be like, yeah, why not? I know your name, you, you come here often. Familiarizing yourself with the spirits and letting them do the same to you is so incredibly important. However, if you really, for some reason, you're like, there's a grave of a lawyer and I need that grave dirt right now. Do not expect to go there, ask for grave dirt without an exceptional offering in return. Because again, if somebody's asking you for something and you don't know who they are, you're gonna want payment. You're gonna want something from that. They're, you're not just gonna be like, yeah, you can borrow my car. I don't know who you are, but sure. No, nobody's gonna do that. I mean, I wouldn't. So befriend them and you'll start to realize that you have certain spirits that you're a little more comfortable with compared to others. And the last piece of this is how to actually work with them, right? So say you've established a relationship, pick a specific spirit. I mean, sure, you can also ask the general spirits around you, but again, that it just depends on the spell and the thing that you're going for. So let's say you're working with a very specific spirit and now you're thinking, okay, well, I'd like to ask for their aid in something or maybe if I can use some of their grave dirt. You just do it. You go in, take your divination if you wish, and just ask them, hey, this is what I'm gonna use your grave dirt in or this is what I'm asking you to aid me in. Would you mind helping? Honestly, if there's not this really intense no, then you can go for it. And say the spirit isn't really into it, but they don't give you a hardcore no, the worst thing that's gonna happen is nothing. They're just not gonna do it. If you do get a very intense feeling that it's a no, then don't. <laughs> Cause if you do, I don't know, if I was a spirit and somebody did that after I told them no, I'd be pretty pissed and I, I'd give you a manifestation. I don't think it's gonna be the kind that you want, but I'll give you a manifestation of some kind. <laughs> That's how you do it. It's really not this big fantastical thing. However, I will say if you decide to do any kind of spell work at the side of the grave or in the cemetery, again, keep in mind of the visitors that are also there. And if you decide to leave something like an offering or maybe it's a spell jar or something of that sort near this gravestone, make sure that it is safe for the nature that lives in the cemetery as well as the visitors because often there are very small visitors that sometimes see something shiny or interesting and want to touch it and pick it up so don't put anything on it like just just make sure that you're being thoughtful of everybody around you both living and non otherwise that's kind of it it takes a lot more time and patience than i think a lot of people prefer however it's so worth it especially when you're working with something like you're doing a protection spell for a community-based thing so maybe i would find somebody connected with whatever problem or the thing that i want to protect from um, then i would really gravitate towards somebody who has 
experience and knowledge of that and ask them for aid. But that is how I work with the Spirits of the Dead. I hope that this cleared up a couple of things for you. If you have any questions, please, by all means, leave them down in the comments below. And I wish you happy cemetery strolls. Do visit your dead both in the fall and the winter because often they don't get very many visitors around then. But otherwise, that's all for this video. If you'd like more content like this, I do have a Patreon. I do weekly readings, extra videos, polls. We have a Discord server that's really fun. And that is kind of the thing that is really supporting this channel right now. So thank you to all of my current Patreons and all my future ones. Otherwise, that is all for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Best of luck. Be kind to each other. And may your gods treat you as you've treated others. Bye.